Four things you didn't know attracted shark. Number one, brightly colored bathing suits. As if these weren't bad enough, apparently they also attract sharks. Now, sharks for the most part are colorblind, however, they do see highly contrasting images. So when we're something this bright and literally horrible into the water, I guess it makes sharks more inclined to bite, especially yellow, so... Number two, swimming in jewelry is a horrible idea because basically when they see something bright, shiny, and glittery in the water, it actually looks like fish scales to them and that could cause a shark to bite or at least be curious enough to try and take a test taste, which you really don't want when it's your arm or leg. Number three, lots of splashing or unusual activity. Basically, if you're being extremely rambunctious in the water, this is not a good idea. Or if you're bleeding, please do not freak out and panic because that will definitely attract sharks. Number four, swimming at dusk or dawn. This is definitely not a good idea because sharks are the most active during these times when it comes to hunting, especially in more tropical areas where you might have reef sharks now. They are especially in tune because they do not need to use their sight to hunt. They can also detect your electromagnetic impulses. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. Only somebody would have told me, babe. Don't have powder. Now you walk around with PD in your trousers. Diamonds bullying on my chest, no fucking blouse. Bitch, I make it rain shower. You did that. They want to know a thing about you. You still that. Kill them with that block. So you guys wanted me to mix number four and number 16, which is a surprise. It is chocolate. Potassium chloride is a strong oxidizer. It's able to oxidize the sugar and start the fire. <sighs> Don't tell anyone. The first thing we do is melt the potassium chloride. Oh my God. How far can a sharpie pen draw? For me, every single sharpie I test goes far. And honestly, I've never picked one of these up that didn't work. This one was interesting though, because it didn't put down a lot of ink. You can literally see how light it is. And I was drawing with this one for about 40 minutes. I had to make the treadmill go slow because it was such a small tip. But eventually it ran out of ink at 779 laps. And that's a pretty good one and a quarter miles. was a giant clam. I have to call them mermaid bathtubs because they get to about four feet long and weigh 500 pounds. They are absolutely massive and gorgeous. Despite their large size and imposing nature, they're not actually dangerous to people almost ever. They're really just gentle giants that close too slow to pose a serious threat. That is unless you're this man who decided to be a great idea to stick his genitals inside of a giant clam with which it then closed upon him, caused him to have an allergic reaction. He swelled up, almost drowned, but didn't die. But at the end of the day, just don't do that and you'll probably be fine. This is a rattle from a rattlesnake. I've always wondered how rattlesnake rattles make sound. Well, if you look inside, you'll see it's pretty hollow. This is very surprising. I thought rattlesnake rattles worked like maracas, and they had little bits inside that knocked around to make sound. But they're hollow, so that can't be the case. But look here. If I pull on the rattle, a piece comes off. It seems like the rattle can come apart in different sections. Here's an image that can help us see how the sections fit together. One section is highlighted in white. 
See how all of the segments fit loosely inside each other? Now look at this. Notice how the segments aren't firmly connected. They have space to wiggle around and move. So when the rattle is shaken, those segments knock into each other. And that's how a rattlesnake rattle rattles.